All right. Before our test, before we had this, this fun exam that we just did, we were talking about something called the addition rule. And what the addition rule said is if you want to find the probability of something, one event, or another thing, another event occurring, that or word, we had to use the addition rule. And basically what we do is we add the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event and then subtract this thing. And what was this thing? That's the double count, that's right. Or in other words, this is the probability of event A and event B occurring in the same trial, the same trial right there. That same is the key word. So this right here, I'm, I'm making a clear point because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something that looks similar to this and you have to know the difference between them, okay? So right here, this means both at the same time. Or in other words, this is during a single trial. Both at the same time during a single trial. You see, right now we're going to get into section 4.4 and we're going to talk about something called the multiplication rule. And we're going to have another word and in just a bit. And I need you to know that there's a difference between the and I'm going to tell you in a minute and the and that we have from the addition rule. Here's why I made such a big stink about this not literal stink, like a figurative stink. Like, you know. I didn't make a stink. Uh, <laughs> I came out weird too. So, <laughs> we have this and, which means at the same time in one trial. This and, for a multiplication rule, this means something different. And people get very confused about this because in English we use and and and, right? I mean, we have this word twice. Here, when we're talking about the addition rule and we're saying probability of A or B, what we mean is the probability of A happening or B happening, or they both happen at the same time. Nod your head with me if you're with that. Okay. With the multiplication rule, the probability of A and B, what we mean in this instance, if you just say to see probability of A and B, it's not in here or anything, what this means is I want you to find the probability of event A happening and then event B happening right after it. Does that make sense? Two different things. This is A and B at the same time. This right here, when we're talking about multiplication rules, says I want you to find the probability of A happening and then after that B happening. So for instance, what's the probability that you take a dice out and you roll a five and then a three? Is that possible to do? Can you take a dice and then roll a five and then pick it up and then roll a three? That's what we're finding the probability of here. In this case, it was, what's the probability of rolling a 5 or a 3? If you do one roll, they can't happen at the same time. But if you do successive rolls, you could roll a 5, then pick up the die, and then roll a 3. Do you see the difference in these two things? So while this and meant both at the same time during a single trial when you're talking about A or B, this and means the probability of A happening and then B happening in successive trials. Well, I talked so long, my pen went dry. That's weird. <laughs> and the key phrase is, and then. Not and at the same time. And then. Be occurring. in successive events, or six, I'm sorry, in successive trials. That, that word uh, successive, what's that mean, by the way? So right after, that's right, so right after each other. Would you raise your hand feel comfortable with the difference between the ants? 
So while we have two ands, they mean two different things. Same, same word, two different things. When you're talking about the context of an or problem, the and means at the same time. When you're talking about the context of an and problem, that's multiplication rule, those, uh, those trials are one right after another. It's A and then B happen. To kind of illustrate the, the multiplication rule, let's say I give you a test. Ready for a test? It's going to be a fun test. We just had one. I'm a tough teacher, guys. There's only two questions on this test. Only two questions on this test. Question number one is a true or false question. And the question is, true or false, Mr. Leonard drives an Audi. <laughs> Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Does anyone know the answer to that question? False. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stalkers, whatever. How do you know? Thank goodness. The next question is multiple choice. <laughs> Someone in my other class asked, Mr. Leonard, were you following me on the freeway? I, Natural response was, well, I have no idea. It's not like they follow you around. And they said, oh, well, do you drive a Prius? I was like, well, no, I don't drive a Prius. I said, wait, do I look like I drive a Prius? The, the whole class was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I looked in the mirror and, yeah, I kind of look like I drive a Prius. <laughs> I don't drive. And my favorite color is, this is Mr. Leonard's favorite color. Let's see, you have a choice. Does anyone know the answer to this question? Black. Yeah, I Blue. Stalkers. Because <laughs> <laughs> their car is black. Because <laughs> 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 their car is black. Blue. Yellow. My, my car is actually very dark blue. <laughs> my other car is black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just pretend that. Adriana doesn't know everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> <We don't. laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's pretend you didn't know the answer to these questions, okay? Because I just made these up randomly. But let's say that you didn't know whether or not I drove an Audi, and you didn't know what my favorite color is, and you're going to take a random guess at this. What I want to know is if you guess randomly, what's your probability you're going to find the right answer? We're going to discover that, and that's going to lead us into, we're starting with the easy example, that'll lead us into the multiplication rule. So if you guess randomly, which most of you are going to have to do because you don't really know anything about me. Thankfully. <laughs> if you guess randomly, what's the probability you will get the right answer on both questions? Now, I want you to notice that we are not in the addition rule any longer. I'm not asking, what's the probability of you getting either this one right or this one wrong? I'm not asking that. Or this one right or wrong? I'm not asking that. What I'm asking is, find the probability that you're going to get this one right, and then you're going to get this one. You're going to answer this one too, right? Find the probability you're going to get this one right, and then you're going to get this one right. Notice how we're talking about successive events, one right after another. An event would be answering the question. 
So you're going to answer this one, then you're going to answer another question. That's this one. That right there tells you that we are in an and type of probability. We want the first one right and the second one right. Now you're going to be clear on that. Good. All right. What needs to happen for us to get both answers right? Well, you've got to answer the first one right, and then you've got to answer the second one right. How many choices do we have to choose from? How many choices do you have for the first one? Yeah, because you could do either true or false. You could do either true or false. Now, if you pick true, does it determine what you're going to pick for this answer? No. So you could pick true and then pick A, couldn't you? Or true and then B, true and then C, true and then D, true and then E. That gives you, for each T, A, B, C, D, and E to choose from. Now, what if you choose false? Could you choose false and then choose A? False B, false C. It gives you the same, gives you, it gives you the same five choices for choosing false as well. Let's talk about our sample space for our, our choices here. Remember, sample space was everything that you could happen from your procedure. If our procedure is answering these two questions randomly, one right after the other, I'm just going to list it out because I wanted to kind of go over sample space again. Then our sample space is true and then A. That's one that we could get. We could get true and then B. That's another one. True and C and so forth. Would you agree that this is everything that starts with a T? Mm -hmm. Notice how we're kind of going along the same idea as our the boy-girl thing that we did? The three boys, or two boys, one girl. Here's all our, our true, true comma multiple choice answers, and our false ones look almost identical, it's just instead of the T's we'll have an F. <laughs> Here's the question. How many right answers are there up there? Two. How many correct answers? One. Two correct answers? This can only be answered correctly one way, right? I don't have more than one favorite color. This can only be answered one way, one way as well. So together, there's only one way you can answer this correctly. One of these choices is correct. In fact, it's a... Uh, It's this one. That's the correct answer right there. So if that's the correct answer, how many total choices do you have? You didn't know that, did you? You all thought, <laughs> it's an old Audi, but still an Audi. <laughs> how many total choices did you have to choose from? There's 10 ways you can answer the question, only one of them is right, so that's a 1 in 10 chance you're going to get both of these things correct. So the probability of getting both right is the probability that you're going to randomly select true and that you're going to randomly select D. That's half a chance. Oh, not half a chance. You have a chance. 50% chance for the top one and a 20% chance for the bottom one. Is there a way that we can kind of come up with a better way to do this and just sit, listen to sample space and answers? Yeah, we're going to cover it in just a bit. Before we do that, I want to give you one more example, though. The other example is going to go back to your guilty, not guilty table. find the probability of selecting someone who is guilty and then selecting someone 
who is not guilty. So I want to find the probability of selecting someone guilty, and then without replacement, that means I don't put that person back in the, in the mix, I want to select someone who's not guilty. So how many people am I selecting? How many people? If I'm selecting one person who is guilty, and then selecting another person who's not guilty, how many people in total? Two people. Notice how we have two trials now. One trial is happening, and then another one's happening. So the probability of selecting guilty and then not guilty That and in the multiplication rule that we just talked about that said this and means in successive trials, that really should be written and then. A and then B. So if you wanted to put a little and then, that would separate them for you. That's what we really mean is the and then. So find the probability of selecting guilty and then not guilty. Let's talk about the guilty. What's the probability you're going to be found guilty in this group of people? How many guilty people do we have? How many people were found guilty? Yeah, it's not just 72, right? It's not just 11. This is my guilty column, or my guilty row. I have 83 people. Eighty-three people were found guilty out of how many? Out of how many? Okay, how would you find out how many? Add them all up. How much was it? Oh, all to the all four? All four is everybody. 177. I'll believe you. Yep, 177. Are you okay that the probability of being found guilty is 83 out of 177? There's 177 total people in this, 83 of them were found guilty. True? Now, here's the idea. This is a big part of this in the last few minutes here. And then implies this. This is the key point. And then, the and, implies, let's assume that this actually happened. You found someone who was guilty. You took him out of the mix. Can you please tell me how many not guilty people we have to choose from? 94. 94 people. Out of how many total people? Okay, say, hang on. Say, say that again. How many people? 176. Why not 177? Oh, we, one guy was is now in jail, right? So we pulled that guy out. He's gone. We now have, instead of 177 people, if we assume, listen, if you're pulling out two people in a row, if you pull out the first guy and he was guilty, your 83 drops to 82. You also pulled one, one guy out from the 177, so this total drops down. This is now only 176. You pulled someone out. Now, our 94 stays 94. We didn't pick out a not guilty guy. We picked out the guilty guy. So again, when you're talking about and then, Notice how your probability can actually change as you go through and do more and more events. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? This would be without replacement. Make sure you know that. Without replacement. Remember this idea for Friday because we're going to talk about conditional probability. It's all based on this. Uh, but for right now, the key things we need to know are that and means and then like the successive events, probability of one occurring and then another occurring. It's different than the addition rule that we just accomplished, and we'll talk about the rest of the stuff next time. So we're talking about this probability, and we've realized that and in this instance means in successive events. So we want something and then something else. Really the and in the multiplication rule should be and then. And here we had our probability of answering both these questions right. We figured out last time was one-tenth. Probability of selecting someone guilty, we have here, and not guilty there. Now, what this leads to, I want you to look at this. Did this probability of getting this question right, or the probability of getting this question right, affect the outcome of this question? Did these two questions affect each other? My, my, basically, 
does answering this question right or wrong have anything to do with answering this question right or wrong, or getting this, the probability of selecting this one right or wrong? That's just no. That these have nothing to do with each other. However, when you look down here, look at this. Did the probability of selecting someone guilty affect the probability of selecting the next person as not guilty? It did, because that number dropped. We took out a person from our, our sample here. Does that make sense to you? This leads to an idea called conditional probability. We're going to talk about that right now. Conditional probability. Here's what conditional probability is. It's the probability of some event occurring given that another event has already occurred. So in this instance, it was, what's the probability of selecting someone who is not guilty given that you just selected someone who was guilty? Does that make sense to you? It's conditioned upon some previous event. So when we say conditional probability, we mean the probability of an event occurring given that some other event has already occurred. given that some other event has already occurred. I'm going to go back and find these probabilities individually. We're going to kind of draw some conclusions from this later. Uh, look up here with me on, on example number one here. Can you please tell me what's the probability of getting this question correct by guessing? I mean, I told you the answers of these, so you should get 100% on all this, right? Because you know everything about me now. But what's the probability of guessing and getting this answer right? Mr. Leonard drives an Audi. Sure. Why? Because there's one correct answer out of how many choices? Sure. What was the probability of guessing this one correct? How many choices are right? How many total choices do you have to choose from? Okay. Uh, now, does getting this one right affect this one at all? No. Okay, so this, we're going we're to learn about this in just a second. Uh, this probability would be one-fifth. Okay. Now, in this case, we had the probability 83 over 177. That came from we had 83 guilty people out of the 177 total. That would be our probability of getting someone guilty. Let's pretend that this didn't happen right now. I'm just looking at the probability of not guilty. What I would have is 94 out of 177. If I just found the probability of selecting one not guilty person, are you with me on that? But after I say this, do this after selecting the guilty person, then that probability drops. It's conditioned on the fact that you just pulled out a person who was guilty and you kept them out because we're talking about without replacement. That's our, the idea of conditional probability. It's that sometimes a probability is dependent on a previous event. Here, this probability really wasn't dependent on a previous event. Uh, we're going to talk about independent and dependent in just a second. This would be an independent event. Here, this one depends on what happened first, right? This is an example of a dependent event. So conditional probability is looking at two probabilities happening and find the probability of an event given that a previous one has already occurred. The way you write that out, it's, it's still a probability. It's just conditional probability. It looks like this. You're going to have some event, like event B, you have this vertical line, and what this vertical line stands for in, in statistics and probability is given that. So what this probability says is the probability of event B happening given that A has already occurred. This is the probability of event B occurring given that event A has already occurred.
that's what would happen in these cases. This is find the probability of getting the color question correct, given that you already got the Audi one correct. Now, the Audi one doesn't affect the color one. That's not, pro not a problem. But here, it's find the probability of selecting someone who's not guilty, given that you just selected someone who's guilty. And that does affect the probability. So I, I need you to see the difference. Do you see the difference between this type of problem, where the one probability does not affect the other one, where one event does not affect the other one, and this one, where one event certainly did affect the other probability? How many people see that difference there? So sometimes, yeah, we have uh, probabilities that don't affect each other. Some events don't affect each other at all. Other times we do. Th this without replacement here certainly affects the second probability. This gives us a definition for what's called independent events. Here's the basic definition for an independent event. Uh, independent means, like, if you're independent, you stand alone, right? Independent man, or independent woman. Stand alone, don't need anybody else, nothing affects me, right? That's kind of what independent means uh, in kind of English, right? You're, you're, you're by yourself, you don't rely on anything. That's what independent means for probability two. Uh, an independent event, or events which are independent, says the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another event. Those things would be independent. Here's the example I have for you. Okay, it's, it's back here. Does this event affect the outcome of this event? Does this event affect the outcome of this event? That's the difference between dependent and independent. Events which are not independent are dependent. You have to be one or the other. Okay, so independent events, the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another. Dependent events, the occurrence of one event does affect the occurrence of another event. So when we're talking about independent events, that's what we're going to write down. The occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another event. Or I should say probably subsequent event, the one after that. One of them doesn't affect the other one. Also make a little side note down here. Events that are not independent are dependent. You have to be in one class or the other. So non-independent events are dependent. Tuition's going up. So you should be getting even more bang for your buck, right? Say yes. 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 That means we should stay here later, obviously. Yes. <laughs> that was a good try, right? Yeah. Okay, so independent events don't affect each other. Dependent events do affect each other. Again, we're going to list these out over here. This is definitely independent as far as the events go. These do not affect each other. One, the effect of the outcome of this one did not affect the probability of this one. Down here, it definitely did. This without replacement generally means they're dependent. You're taking one away from your sample. I mean, the probability is going to change. This is definitely dependent. Hey, by the way, um, one little note.
let's suppose for a second that A and B are independent. Remember, this means the probability of B occurring given that A's occurred, okay? Let's say they're independent. Let's say that they have nothing to do with one another, like this example, where number one didn't affect number two. If these things are independent, if A and B are independent, If A and B are independent, tell me what that equals. Think about it. Does A, if, if events A and B, are you understand the independence? If things are independent, does A affect B? Okay, so here's the question. If A does not affect B, what's the probability of event B happening given that A's already occurred? If you're not quite catching on to this, let me ask this question, right? With the board. You're answering these questions in order, true? You're going to answer this one, then you're going to answer this one. Let me ask this. Let me ask you this. Let's see, you did this in order, and you say, okay, I answered this one, got it right, got it wrong, doesn't matter. Does it affect your outcome for this one? What if I just asked you this one, if I asked you this independently, just by itself, forget problem one. If I asked you this by itself, what would the probability be that you get right? Wait, say that again. One out of five. One out of five. Are you all okay with that? This is one out of five. There's only one right answer. There's five choices. One fifth is our answer. This is not a hard probability. Don't overthink this. The probability of just getting this one right is one fifth. True? Now, do this. What's the probability of getting this one right given that you just got this one right? One fifth. Is it still one fifth? Did getting this one right change this probability? No. So apply that to this concept. What's the probability of getting this one right, given that you got this one right? It's the same thing as just getting this one right. Does that make sense? They don't affect each other. They're independent. So what's the probability of B, given that A has occurred, if these things are independent? Well, probability of B. See that ladder? Probability of B. It's the same thing. Let that sink in a little bit. That, that kind of has to make sense to you. Uh, otherwise, you really don't understand the idea of independence. So if, if two things are independent, they, they don't affect each other at all, right? So what's the probability of B happening given that A's occurred? It doesn't even matter if A's occurred or not, right? A is not affecting B. It didn't even matter that you got this right or wrong. It's not affecting number two. Does this make sense to you? So in this case, if, if you have independent events, I hope you're seeing that, if you have independent events, this one is not affecting this one. Therefore, the probability is just B itself. It's not being influenced by A. That's if the events are independent. How many of you understood that? Raise your hand if you're Good, all right. Let's try a couple of examples here just to illustrate this. Uh, I'm going to come back on this side of the board and we're going to kind of make up the multiplication rule just by looking at this. So I'm going to erase this. Are there any questions on our conditional probability? So conditional probability simply means that uh, the probability of one event occurring given that some other event has already happened, that's written like this. This means the probability of B occurring given A's already happened. This is what that means, B given A. If they're independent, if they're not related in any way, if one does not affect the other, such as this case, then the probability of B given A is just the probability of B because A is not influenced. Now let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. Could also be the probability of A? Wait, for this one? Yeah. No, this is talking about the probability of, of this event happening. This one's already happened. This is in the past. Okay, so we're looking really for event B in this case. That's a good question. Any other good questions before we move on? Any other bad questions before we move on? Okay. We're going to roll a die.
first thing I need you to understand is what this means. If we're rolling a die, this is the context of a, of a dice roll or a die roll. This says, read that aloud to me. What's that say in English? Good. Say that louder so everyone can hear you. Probability of two given that three already happened. Perfect. Probability of rolling a two given that you just rolled a three. Which one happened first in this case? Did you roll the two first or the three first? Three. So here's what happened. You took out your die and you rolled it. And what'd you get? Three. Now you pick up that die again and you're rolling it again. What's the probability that you're going to get a two? What's the probability that you're going to get a two given that you just rolled three? Did it change? No, because you can roll a die as many times as you want to. The probability is always the same, right? That's why die are so nice. The probability stays the same no matter what. So this is the same thing as just the probability of 2. What does that tell you about these events? Are they independent or dependent? Independent. Good. Did, the three, did rolling a 3 affect the probability of rolling a 2? No. That means they're independent. That's a weird looking end. Independent. So we just have one sixth. The probability of rolling a two, given you roll a three, it doesn't change. It's still just one sixth. You have one two out of six possible choices. That's it. Now we're going to go to the standard deck of cards again. We're going to draw some cards out, okay? What I want to find out, what's the probability of randomly selecting a queen in this case? Hey, again, which happened first? Did we select the queen first or the nine first? So what this says is, what's the probability of randomly drawing out a queen given that you just drew out a nine? So here's what happened, okay? I give you the deck of cards, and I say you are going to select how many cards? One. You know, it, the whole thing, you're going to select two cards. So I say, pick a card, any card. And you go, oh, here's a nine. And you put it in your pocket, or you put it back in the deck. And I, I reshuffle it and all that stuff, and I now pick another card. So you had your nine, right? So now I'm asking, what's the probability of selecting the queen after you've selected that nine? So you're drawing out two cards. The first one, given that, given that, the first one had to be a nine. Now, what's the probability of selecting that queen? Did you put it back in? Or did you keep it? Ah, there's the question. So do you see how that would make a difference? Mm -hmm. If I put the 9 back in, or I keep the 9 out, does that change my probability? Yes. So in one case, you're going to be dependent. In the other case, you're going to be independent. Which one would be independent? Putting back the card or keeping out the card? Well, I heard two different answers there. I heard <laughs> keeping back. <laughs> right. Okay, let's try this again. If you, what I say, I say put it back in, or keep. Or I ask you for independent, dependent. Okay, which one is independent? Putting the card back in or keeping the card back out? Here's what this translates to. Uh, which one is not going to change the second probability? Putting the card back in or keeping the card out? Okay. <laughs> Let me ask this, okay? If if it's not if it's independent, doing this and doing this after this should make no difference. Okay, that's what independent means. So if I just had a deck of cards and said draw a card, what's the probability of getting a queen? Hopefully you're thinking four queens, fifty-two cards is four out of fifty-two. That's the probability of getting a queen by itself. Now, if I ask you this question, draw nine first. If you keep the nine out, does it affect the probability? Yes. Then that is called independent. If you keep the nine out, that's without replacement. Okay. If I replace the nine, so you draw the nine, you put it back. What's the probability of drawing the queen out? Well, there's still 52 cards now, right? You put the nine back. With replacement, if you always put the card back, you're always getting the same probabilities. That's independent. So I have to ask you two different questions here. The first one is, let's say we're doing this with replacement. without replacement.
Okay, with replacement. Then what that means is you draw the nine. You, you've of course drawn the nine out, right? In either case, you're drawing the nine out. You're drawing two cards. First one was a nine. I say worth replacement. I say, give me that card back. I put it back and I shuffle it up, right? Is that dependent or independent again? Independent. Definitely independent because you're going back to the same number of cards you started with. So this is for sure going to be independent. What's the probability? Four. How many queens do you have? Four. How many cards do you have? 52. Why 52 and not 51? Because you're That's very good. 52, that should be 113. or some decimal views calculator. Let's talk about the width replacement. So again, you're drawing two cards. You draw one out, it's the nine. So given that you drew the nine out, you put that nine in your pocket. How many queens are left? Four. How many cards are left? 51. Why 51? Because you have the nine in your pocket. So does selecting the nine affect the probability of selecting the queen? Definitely. This is a dependent circumstance. Let's try one more, see if you really get the hang of this. Maybe, maybe two more, let's do it on your own, okay? Uh, try one with replacement, one without replacement. Let's say probability of selecting a I told you we had fun. So these problems are going to look identical. You really have to know with replacement, without replacement. Dependent, independent. You've got to know that. Figure those out. If you're done with that already, I'll give you one more kind of challenge problem. That's Jack of Diamonds. Are we doing that one with replacement? Mm, no, without. Do it both. Do it with them and without. suit, four cards, uh, four of every specific card. One card, one number per card per suit. So like there's only one jack of diamonds. Bless you. Oh, here's some homework to pass back. Make sure this goes around quickly. Oh, well, not to forget. All right, let's discover what we got out of this thing. So with replacement, you're going to notice that with replacement doesn't affect your probability. So if you're always putting the card back, this second part is honestly, it's irrelevant, right? If you're always putting the card back, it doesn't change anything. So with independent events, if it's with replacement, it doesn't matter. So what's the probability of selecting a queen, given that you selected a queen, if you've replaced the queen? Good. Yeah, there's still four queens because you put the queen back. There's still 52 cards because you put the card back. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Good. 
Let's try this one. Let's suppose they selected a queen, giving you selected a queen without replacement. So you selected one card, it was a queen, you put it away. I say, what's the probability you're going to get your next queen? Three. Why three? Ah, you kept that queen out. 51, you kept the card out. Good job. You got that one right. That's great. That's fantastic. Hey, could I keep going? Could I say, find the probability of selecting a queen? After selecting the queen, after selecting the queen, after selecting the queen. Mm -hmm. Be only one out of 50, whatever you do. You'd count that down. This concept can be extended. How about the probability oh, of selecting a heart, giving you selected a jack of diamonds? I can't ask you what's the probability of selecting a heart, giving you selected a jack. Because jack, you don't know. Was it a heart? Was it a diamond? Was it a club? Was it a spade? So I had to tell you a specific suit. So. With replacement, what's the probability of selecting a heart, given you've already selected a jack of diamonds? With replacement? 52. You've replaced that card. Good. There's 13 hearts out of 52 cards, because we've put that jack back. Now, let's say we don't put the jack back without replacement. Probability of selecting a heart, given you selected a jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Why 13? There's still 13 hearts. We took out a jack of diamonds, right? So we didn't touch the hearts. There's still 13 of them. How many cards? Could you do this if I said that was a jack of hearts? No. What not? It would change the probability, sure. If that was a jack of hearts, you would have 12 over 51. That's right. So probability stuff, as long as you're keeping with the dependent and dependent, you know what replacement without replacement is, you should be okay with this. I hope you'll feel all right with what we talked about so far today. Good. Good. We're ready. We're ready for the multiplication rule. Now, when we're going back over this, here's where we're going to start. We're going to look at this thing. Can you tell me, is there a way to get from one-half and one-fifth to one-tenth? Have you seen that? Sure. Here's what we did when I drew that, that diagram for you. Honestly. The purple one? When we when I drew that diagram, I drew uh, true, false, and I had one, two, three, four, five options, one, two, three, four, five options. So for every choice I had here, I had this many choices. So for a true, I had five choices. For a false, I had five choices. So essentially what we did is we said, I've got two choices for the first one. I've got five choices for the second one. Combined with each other, that gives me ten total choices to choose from out of my problems, right? We said we could do true A, true B, true C, true D, and so on. And we could do false A, false B, and so on. That gave me ten choices. How many of them was the right choice? Only one of them. That gave me a probability of one out of ten. If we think about it differently, we go, okay, well, I can do the same thing with the probabilities themselves. If I look at this probability and this probability, we'll notice the one tenth is simply the one half times the one fifth. That's how we do this. That's the multiplication rule. It says if you have an and probability, what's the probability of getting both of these right? This one and this one. What's the probability of selecting a guilty and a not guilty? Multiplying our probabilities. And that's going to lead us to the multiplication rule right now. Are there any questions on this before I erase that? We'll move back over here. So the multiplication rule. says I want you to find the probability of A and B. By the way, A and B, this and, is this in a single trial or in successive trials? What is that? In this context, this is in successive trials. The single would be at the back end of the or probability. So what this means is A and then. A and then B. That means successive trials. A and then B. Well, here it is. In order to find the probability of an and, pro an and problem, so probability of A and then B, we do take the first probability. A happens first. 
probability of A. So in our, in our question up here that we had before, the Audi question, we have one half. That would be our first probability. Times how many choices you have for the second probability. So really, all you're doing here, folks, you're taking the number of choices you had for the first, first event and multiply it by the number of choices you have for the second. Because for each choice you have on the first event, you have that many choices for the second event. The true A, true B, true C, false A, false B, false C. So we, that's a multiplication problem. So we are multiplying by event B. There's only one more thing I have to check on there. You notice I, I'm missing a parenthesis here. Here's why. Here's why. Watch the board here very carefully, please. I'm going to show you something. This works if your events are independent like they are for the dice, like they were for our two, first two questions. Because A does not affect B. You take the total outcome here, multiply by the total outcome here, you get the total for, them, for both of them together in the and probability. However, is it possible that A can affect event B? Yeah, we just saw that, right, right here. Without replacement, it affects it. So we have to say not only is it probability of A times probability of B, it's probability of A times the probability of B given that A has just happened. But remember, remember, if these two things are independent, what's this equal to? So that, yeah, so, but remember, If independent, probability of B given A equals the probability of B. So then this probability would simply equal the probability of A times, well here, it would be the probability of B. I need you to check that on the board and raise your hand if that makes sense to you, why we're, we're getting two similar things here. Why we have this one, if they're dependent, well, A is going to affect B. And independent, well, A doesn't affect B. And we know that if they're independent, this is the same as this. Um, I, I usually just stick to this one, because you're never going to screw that one up. Uh, if they're independent, it really doesn't make a difference, right? So we're going to, really, we're going to use this formula all the time. I just want you to notice that if this is independent, you just stick with the probability of B. That's why I have that up on the board. Are you clear on that one? Yes, sir. Yes. We haven't fun yet? Yeah. Just live? Yes. Thank you. This is awesome. I love this stuff. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you're having fun. Would you like to try a few examples to kind of flesh this thing out in the last 10 minutes or so? Yes. yes. The answer to that question is always yes. That's right. Of course you would. We've got a bag of marbles. Some of you probably think I've lost my marbles. Have you heard that expression before? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm getting older because some of my expressions, like pinch pennies, you're like, lost his marbles? I don't know. Because the guy was crazy, right? Because he lost his marbles. And he could fly. It's a bag of marbles. Here's what's in your bag of marbles. Three red, two blue, four green. What we're going to do is find the probability of selecting green and blue. We're going to do this one with replacement. We're do the same one without replacement. After that, I'm going to have you try a couple on your own. Find the probability of a red and red.
uh, with out replacement. And then I want you to find the probability of a blue and blue and blue without replacement. So that's our, our goal for today, so for the rest of our day, figure out that stuff. Maybe we'll talk about a couple more later on. Okay, probability of green and blue with replacement. With replacement means you draw the marble out, you put the marble back, then you draw again. So with replacement, what's the probability of selecting a green marble, please? Four, four out of nine. What now? Four out of nine. Why nine? nine? Okay, great. So what we're looking for is the probability of green times the probability of blue, given you picked out a green one. Here's how you write this out in math speak. You just need to write the same thing all these times and be able to determine with replacement or without replacement. That's pretty much it, right? That's why we stick to this formula. We don't have to get confused between these two. It's just one. It's just one formula. So what's the probability of selecting a green? You said four out of nine times. What's the probability of selecting a blue marble given you selected a, a green marble first? You okay with the green marble? Four to nine. What's the probability of selecting a blue marble now given you just pulled out the green one? Why out of nine? Sure, this is with replacement. So there's still two marble, two blue marbles. There's still nine marbles total. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across. Straight across. So we're going to get what on our numerator? Over? No. Let's multiply fractions. <laughs> We do know how to roll up, please. Nine. Nine, nine. <laughs> Let's try this question. Do the eights cancel? No. Thank God. <laughs> Fractions are multiplied straight across. Right? You, you do. <laughs> I'm saying, Mr. I graduated in calculus. Uh, no, it's not 18. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it, we, we multiply straight across. You simplify as you go as well. Nothing simplifies here, so we have 8 over 81. You punch that into a calculator, you find me a decimal. Notice how that's a relatively small probability. So I say, what's the probability of selecting a green marble, putting it back, and then selecting a blue marble? It's pretty low. It's not up there. It's not like 50-50 or something like that. It's pretty low probability. Okay, let's do the green and blue without replacement. So this would be the probability. It's going to be identical. Probability of selecting a green times the probability of selecting the blue, given you just selected the green. Um, what's the probability of selecting the green? Notice how this one's the same, right? Probability of green, that's, that's just there. That's your first marble. That's not going to change. Times, can you tell me the probability of selecting a blue marble, given you just selected the green marble, and you kept it out? Good, there's still two blues, but there's only eight marbles. How much is that going to be? You could put 8 over 72. However, this does simplify. So you need, do need to know how to simplify fractions. 4 goes into 4 one time and into 8 two times. True? 2 goes into 2 one time and into 2 one time. You get 1 ninth. You get 1 ninth. It's a slightly better probability that this is going to happen than this is going to happen. And I hope you understand why. If you pull out a green marble and then you look for a blue marble, if you put it back, you add one more to the marble numbers, it's not green, right? Or, I'm sorry, it's not blue. So you, you have less probability of selecting that blue marble. But if you keep the green one out, there's only eight marbles now to choose from. You have a better probability for that second marble to be blue. That's the idea here, okay? Do the next ones. Please, please. Thank you. 
We only have a few more minutes, so we're going to start on this problem over here. The problem is selecting a red and a red without replacement, meaning you can select a red marble, you're not going to put it back, and you can try to select another red marble. The first red marble, you have three of them. So probability of red times the probability of red given red without replacement. Probability of red, this one, is three out of nine times the probability of getting a red given that you've got the red out already and you kept it out. How many reds are left? How many marbles are left? Perfect. So you're going to get six. Uh, you can reduce this as well. Sorry. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into eight four times. Three, nine, one twelfth. You have a one twelfth probability of selecting a red marble and then another red marble. Are you okay with that one? How many people got that one? Good. You can give me a decimal as well. That's fine. How about blue and blue and blue? Well, this would be blue, given you got a blue. Given you got a blue. So, what's the first one? Blue. What's this probability of selecting your first blue? Times, what's the probability you're going to keep it out, by the way, and select another blue? Okay, what's the probability you're going to get another blue? Zero. Why zero? There's no blue. If I say this, hey, I've got a bag full of uh, two blue marbles and the rest of them are different colors. I'll give you a million dollars if you select out three blue marbles in a row without putting them back. <laughs> and, or you give me ten dollars if you can't do it. Is that a good deal? I'll make you that bet all day long. Okay. Is it going to happen? No, there's only two blue marbles. You can't draw out three, and there's only two of them. So you'd have zero over seven for sure, right? There's zero blue marbles over seven marbles remaining. But look what happens here. What's two times one times zero? zero. Nine times eight times seven is some big number, but it doesn't matter. You have zero over some number. This is going to be zero. That's an impossible probability. Now, as far as the last one goes in the last minute and 10, uh, 20 seconds that we have up here, if we're going to roll a die, what this is going to be is the probability of 1 times the probability of 2 times the probability of 3 times the probability of rolling a 4. Because all these things are independent. The dice doesn't affect each other. So this probability would be probability of 1 times the probability of 2 times the probability of 3 times the probability of 4. They're independent events. Those probabilities aren't affecting each other. So you would have 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth. Or someone takes 6 to the 4th power time once you get it. Anybody? 1,296. Cool. Is that a good probability? So I say, uh, I'll make you a bet on this one. And I say, you roll the die four times in a row. You have to get a 1, a 2, a 3, and then a 4. Is that going to happen? Probably not. Pretty low probability right here. Are you guys understanding the independence as far as this goes? How about this one? Well, this would be without replacement. Without replacement. Probability of the ace. How many aces would you have to start with? Four. Out of <coughs> times. How many kings would you have? Four. Out of? 51. Explain why 51. Okay. Times how many queens? Four. Out of? Four jacks out of 49. Four tens out of 48. If you multiply those, you do your simplification. I don't know what the numbers would be, but you're not going to have a very large probability. It's very small. So this would actually be the probability of getting any straight just by drawing cards out. You go, oh, here's it. You just draw five cards, randomly draw five cards in a row. This, whatever this equals, is going to be the probability of getting straight out of the deck of cards. How many people are today? I'm sure the probability stuff. Very good. Fantastic. Very good.